Welcome to another episode of 100% Epic. I'm Chris and today we have 4D FPV. So what is 4D FPV? Well, it's a motion platform we're gonna be utilizing with FPV to give you the most immersive experience you possibly can. Now, if you're not familiar with motion platforms, it's a lot like an amusement park ride where you sit in a chair and they have a video that's synchronized to the motion. So as it goes, like say over a roller coaster and goes through the dips and the drops, it moves around a little bit, but uh, it tricks your brain because of the video thinking that you're making much larger motions so that you're actually more immersive and in that experience. Now, uh, the first time I ever had a motion uh, platform experience was actually the Star Tours ride at Disneyland when I was in my youth. Now, it was uh, uh, so intriguing to me on how this worked. I actually hunted down a small board that was way out of my price range. Remember, this is about uh, 15, 18 years ago, uh, that recorded PWM motions from a stick to an audio channel, and you could play that back on an audio channel. It was designed for puppeteering back in the day. I tried to synchronize that to a uh, stereo channel on a VHS tape with a video running around with a video camera and it was a complete utter disaster. Move forward a good 15 years and with uh, modern technology, Arduinos, IMUs, this is absolutely a DIY project we can do at home. Now there's actually a lot of information for 2DOF motion platforms uh, DIY that you can do at home, but they're really geared for the PC uh, type of application meaning a simulator like X-Plane or a car simulator, and I'm sure a lot of people have seen that where the platform moves around in correlation with the game. What we're gonna be doing with this is taking live data from FPV and streaming it down to this platform. Now my goal with this platform is that it's gonna be a dual purpose, meaning we can drag it into the house and use it with a PC simulator, or we can drag it out and use it with live data out to the field. I think it can be built for sub $300 and uh, designed in a way that it's collapsible and portable to be brought out a lot like a uh, lawn chair. We can just fold it on out. Stay tuned with me as we go ahead and go through this build. All right, so the first problem to overcome is getting the live data from our aircraft down to our motion platform. Now, I first thought about this a few years ago with APM and OSD where we had the artificial horizon in that. I realized that the Mavlink uh, data stream actually had that information in there. Few problems, latency, um, as well as using a computer to take that information, it was just a headache. Step forward a couple years and uh, IMUs are so cheap, uh, Arduinos are so cheap, there was no reason not to have a standalone solution. Matter of fact, that's what I came up with right here. Standalone uh, solution allows you to just to strap this on and it's the same size as a Mobius or a run cam. So you can strap it onto any quad that was designed to take a, an action cam or an airplane or a wing, you just put it right onto the top of that. Uh, highly adaptable, so you could go out to the field with your motion platform, you could let anyone go for a ride on their quad if they had the, uh, the setup to accept, you know, like a Mobius or a run cam, you just put it on there, put the strap on it, sit them in the chair and go for a ride. Now inside this box I've got a 9DOF, which is uh, 9 degrees of freedom. So we've got a gyro, we've got an accelerometer, and we've got a mag, and the mag corrects for the gyro drift. We've got that and it's uh, spitting out what's called EULA angles into an Arduino, which is interpolating that and sending it out via a control link. Now, on our control link right over here, it's taking in that uh, control link, processes that information on another Arduino, and then does a mix for a, what's called a 2DOF motion chair, and it outputs that over here on the ground. So this is essentially the setup. Now, I know the mechanics of this one are, are not correct as far as the relationships and everything. It was only to prove that the software and everything was working and the telemetry link wasn't having any issues uh, with the, uh, the video or the control link on the aircraft. Now this is running on 433, uh, you could also do it on 915. Control is normally for the, the Rio is on 2.4 and video is on 5.8. So 433 and 915 were a very good option. So just to give you a quick example on how this works, I'm just gonna plug this into mains power. Give this a second to uh, uh, zero itself out. And if I take uh, this box and it's hooked to your quad or sitting on top of your quad and it tilts forward, you're going to tilt forward. It banks to the left or banks to the right, bank back or correlated moves. That's how it's going to actually operate on our 2DOF motion platform right over here. Now, a couple of things I had to think about was the motion on this. Say uh, we extend past what the 2DOF chair uh, goes, how is that going to pick it up? So if we rotate past uh, 90 degrees, it sits at that point, and as it comes back, as soon as the servo is uh, in a range that it can actually pick back up, it picks back up from that and it goes right back to zero. If it rotates over the 90 degrees and it realizes it's making a full uh, revolution after a set point, um, it essentially tries to start walking past uh, back to zero, 
And as soon as it comes around to a point in the servo can, it blends the two back together so you don't get that snap back uh, uh, motion. Now, my end result on this is actually to do an encoder style servo with 360 degrees utilizing those EULA angles, uh, which is definitely a much harder uh, process than this 2DOF chair, just to, as a proof of concept. So you can see, as this is right now, works uh, pretty well. And uh, next step is go ahead and strap this onto our quad, take it out, fly it around, uh, see how the motion correlates with the video, see if it'll work. Another thing that we need to take a look at is, um, once I build the, uh, the DOF chair, the 2DOF chair, is how that motion is going to translate as far as the mixing. So when the quad leans forward and it's accelerating, should the platform actually be going the opposite direction, leaning back so you get that sensation of speed? This could lead to people getting sick or it could lead to a pretty awesome experience. I don't know, that's something we're gonna have to, uh, to play with and tune as we get the actual motion platform up and running. All right guys, let's go out to the field and give this a try. All right, so I've got the uh, Vortex Pro with the module uh, strapped to the front right where a Mobius or Run Cam would go, and I've got the simulated motion platform. What I'm going to do is record the motion platform and the DR footage, synchronize the two, and we'll just have a look how it uh, worked out. Well, that test worked absolutely perfect. I think we're ready to move on with the 2DOF motion platform. Put it in real life use and see if it just makes people sick or if it's pretty awesome. Now, I'm going to be relying on a lot of information from a great website called xsim.net, which is a website dedicated to DIY motion and simulator platforms, mainly geared for the PC uh, for those type of applications, but mainly what I'm going to be pulling from it is information on the large servo motors that we need to drive this platform. Uh, they're basically constructed for uh, 400, from 400 watt, uh, 25 to 1 gear ratio worm drive motors that you can pick up off the internet for about 50 bucks a piece and uh, they just hook up potentiometers and, and uh, servo amps from that and, and are able to drive those. So that's what we're going to be doing in the next episode. We're going to be building the giant servos, getting them strapped to a platform and, uh, and go ahead and take it out for a real world test. My goal on this on a third episode is to drag it out to a multi-GP race where uh, people are going to be just taking this module, putting it onto the top of their quad, take it around for a few laps and see how, uh, see how they like it. Uh, and because I made it modular, we're going to be able to swap it to a lot of different applications uh, that give it a try. Fixed wing, multi-rotor, etc. from there. Stay tuned and as always, please subscribe. See you guys next time on 100% Epic.